What's up everybody, Steve here. So recently we had a pretty heavy storm that ripped through Southwest Florida and um, we actually had several tornadoes come through and really did some devastating, um, devastating damage to some communities and uh, specifically mobile home communities because these structures are just you know not not as secure as a you know a, an apartment complex or a single family home and uh, i'm going to try to take you guys through some so you can see some of the devastation you can see this one over here just completely flipped upside down completely off of its foundation Amazing. So we are in the Fort Myers area. We had these tornadoes come through and um, January 2022 and a lot of the mobile home communities just got devastated as you guys can see. <clears throat> this is located uh, close to Fort Myers Beach. These storms came in with a vengeance and um as you can see that it caused a lot of damage now a lot of these communities to be safe um you know you don't uh, sometimes you have minutes before you can really react to these tornadoes coming through and uh, a lot of the communities actually have like rec centers that are storm proof hurricane proof and uh just just hoping that you know everybody was able to to take shelter um i know a lot of stories people got into their bathtubs and put mattresses over themselves and you know but like that house back there is just completely flipped and then you have other mobile homes that just were not touched at all it's pretty amazing what uh what a tornado can do now i think it was 1994 was after hurricane andrew they enacted um, new laws, HUD, uh, Housing and Urban Development, any new mobile home, manufactured home had to be up to certain uh, wind standards, certain hurricane standards. And um, so anything after 94, they're, they're built to withstand a certain amount of power from these storms whether it's a hurricane or or a tornado and unfortunately a lot of the older structures you know when they meet a lot of these storms head on um, they just they can't hold up so I think it was 1994 when they they enacted the uh, the new new building codes for mobile home manufactured homes um, but I mean even this one looks like the roof got ripped off right here and it looks like a newer mobile home um but yeah that that roof got completely ripped off not sure if that was 94 or newer um but jesus look at this thing just completely flipped upside down amazing now if you're investing in mobile homes let's say a, a mobile home park um you know this is this is going to be tough financially unless you have what's called loss of rents insurance and loss of rents insurance <clears throat> let's say you had a mobile home community of you know 30 homes and half of them got completely damaged and not livable that means you have you have 15 mobile homes that um, that are not paying rent, so there's actual insurance for that. So, like, let's say a storm, or let's say you know you have an apartment complex and um, it catches on fire, and um, you know you you just you're gonna lose all those rent that rent money, so you can actually get insurance to cover that, which I highly uh, suggest doing something like that, especially if you own multiple properties, but. Um, you know these mobile homes they 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 can kick off a fantastic return because usually the expenses associated with them are a lot less 
as compared to like an apartment complex. However, they're they're just not the the most stable structures as you guys can see. And uh, you know, a good hurricane or, or tornado in Florida, I mean, you, you can see the devastation that it could have. Now, this community over here is called the Tropicana Mobile Home Park, and I cannot get in there, which is good. I mean, they just don't want random people, um, you know, going through these places. And you got to understand, a lot of people lost everything, and all their personal belongings and everything are everywhere. And um, you know, a lot of a lot of devastation took place, and you know, they just don't want random people going through and looting and taking other people's possessions. See, they even have a. So this is the entrance to the Tropicana Mobile Home Park. They actually have a portable sheriff's station right up here, which is again fantastic. I mean, it's ensuring that people are. Uh, not coming through and taking personal items as you can see the security guard right there so i think they're doing a good job at keeping people out including myself but i was not able to gain access into the community unless you're i guess a registered volunteer to to help clean up if you're investing in mobile home communities um there's really i did another video on this really breaking it down but there's two different types of mobile home park communities um, when you own the entire park and uh or it can be a combination of of both but um one's called park owned and the other one is just straight lot rent so lot rent is the in my estimation that the better of the investment you don't get such a big return but much less headache because you actually don't own the actual structures so if anything happens or you know anything happens to the structure the tenant just pays rent on the land underneath of them and then anything pertaining to the structure is is their responsibility especially in a storm like this um obviously we're we're hoping for the best for everybody and um, i don't think that there were any casualties which is shocking to say the least um, but, uh, you know, on the flip side, if you have a park owned community where let's say you own 30 structures, then you're responsible for everything. It's more of a headache. Now you do get a bigger return on investment in most cases, but a lot of these mobile home park communities that you own the structures, they're in just, you know, usually really bad shape. They're older structures. They're not to hurt a certain, uh, wind or hurricane code. And um, it, it can just be a nightmare, especially if you own a, an entire park. Now, the one back there, the Tropicana, um, I don't think that that is, that might be, that could be an investor that owns the entire park and then the individual structures are owned by the tenants. I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, but there, you know, there, when you're dealing with an inferior type of a structure, there's always risk associated with that type of uh, investment. So I got back home and showed Jolie the footage specifically of that house that flipped upside down. She said that she saw that exact house on the news and it turned out the a father and daughter were inside of that house and uh, they both crawled out of it with, I guess, minor uh, injuries and, and to, to come out pretty much unscathed is, is astonishing. And she also sent me this screenshot. So this is a report from Matt Devitt with Wink News, multiple tornadoes in Southwest Florida, uh, Lee County tornado, max winds of 118 miles per hour while on the ground for under two miles. The twister damaged 108 mobile homes, injured three people across Point Breeze, Tropicana, and Century 21 communities. That's where we were driving around. Uh, Charlotte County, max winds 110 while on the ground for over one mile, 35 homes damaged in a Gasparilla mobile home community. Uh, Laley, Collier County, which is Naples, Max winds 85 miles an hour while on the ground for two miles. Two homes were damaged in Victoria Falls, then it crossed over to Laley Resort. Uh, Alligator Alley, Collier County, tornado. Uh, I saw this on the news. Overturned tractor trailer on I-75, one injury reported. Uh, Everglade City, Collier County, minor damage to power poles and trees. Anyway, guys, that was kind of uh, disturbing driving through there. I hate to see uh, devastation like that. And uh, Anyway, I appreciate you guys being with me today, and uh, I'll see you guys on the next video.